Okay. So in this section, we wanted to talk about using the sauna and the sauna light. Um, and uh, some people, when they first start the program, I know that they're kind of hesitant to get a full sauna. Um, and Dr. Wilson recommends the near sauna lights as opposed to the far sauna, which is the far infrared, which is with the panels. And you can read about the benefits of the near infrared and why he recommends that in his articles. Um, but the, the actual single sauna lamp is extremely beneficial as well. And I recommend that people start with that if they're not sure yet, they're just getting started. Um, the full sauna is more of an investment financially if you're not making your own. Um, and the single sauna light simply looks like this. Um, so there's the red colored bulb in the center and then you need to have um, a brooder clamp lamp to put it in and you can find these on Amazon you can find them in um, sort of animal feed supply stores sometimes in Home Depot and they're really inexpensive for the the lamp and the light it's usually around $30 um, and ideally it's great for people to use them sort of around the trunk area you can use the light the anywhere really if you have a sore shoulder or short sore leg or whatever but generally for the program recommendations we like people to use them around the trunk that's where the main detox organs are um, 20 minutes on the abdomen 20 minutes on the lower back um, would be great now again for sensitive people I've had sensitive people that need to start with just five minutes on their abdomen and that's kind of all that they can tolerate so if you're a sensitive person and you know that about yourself Always, always, always err on the side of starting with less um, because I find that that's one of the biggest reasons why people kind of give up on this program is they get into a spot where they go, ah, I'm overwhelmed, I can't handle this, it's brought on a big healing reaction. So always err on the side of starting with less and you can always work up to more. Um, full sauna is wonderful because you're getting more of the lights on different parts of your body so it's a little bit more efficient normally with the single lamp I find that people generally don't sweat and that's okay right what we're looking for is the the penetrating heat from the light um, you get a little bit of color therapy as well because it's the red colored bulb. You do want to keep it about 18 inches to two feet away. They do get hot. So if you have children, you have to be really mindful if you're using them around children because they still get quite hot. Um, and what else did I want to mention? Oh, the sweating. So Lewis is going to talk about sort of heating the room up beforehand and, and the temperature and all of that. But I find that, especially at the beginning of a program, if you're a slow oxidizer, you don't sweat as much generally as somebody who is a faster oxidizer. And as the body gets healthier, I find that most people have an easier time sweating. And if you're not with the single light, or even when you first start using your sauna, don't worry about that piece. The goal really is the penetrating heat from the bulbs is going to encourage your body to start to release metals and toxins. And, and the lamp um, and the lights are wonderful for killing off viruses, bacteria, um, Lyme, you know, all sorts of infections, parasites, they don't like the heat from the, from the lights. So wonderful to start using, even if you're not sweating, don't let sweating necessarily be the goal of using the sauna. Cool. So maybe you can go through the, the temperature of the the sure. heating of the room and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to to talk about how powerful the sauna therapy is. And arguably it's the most powerful detoxification procedure of a nutritional balancing program. And a lot of people that begin the program or any form of healing program in general sometimes they think that doing more of the good stuff is going to benefit them but that's not really the case in nutritional balancing if you saw the section where i talked about slow and fast oxidized uh, slow and fast oxidizers there's a specific talk for the human body now dr wilson has found that the optimum time to be in a sauna is about 20 minutes and i would stress massively that do not go over 20 minutes if you first begin in the program 
it's so easy to think, I want to heal, um, I want to get well quick, I'm just going to go in the sauna for 40 minutes, an hour, don't do it because it can be very, very overwhelming. It can put you through some very intense detox reactions that you don't want to be experiencing in the beginning of the program. I also wanted to point out that a lot of people, when they begin the program, their body's temperature regulatory system is not working very well in general. And you can get heat stroke if you end up hitting the sauna too hard early on, which is obviously not a good thing to experience, um, especially if you don't sweat. If you're sat in a sauna and you're not sweating and you're in the sauna for longer than 20 minutes, you can get heat stroke in the beginning. So it's so important to stick to the 20 minutes. And probably like we've mentioned in the earlier videos, you want to be starting off slowly with everything. And the sauna is definitely one to start off slowly with um, as well. Now, the sauna wants to be heated up to about 40 degrees Celsius, which equates to around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, some people, if they can do it financially, can buy saunas already made from places like um, Sauna Space or Clear Light. Um, and these are amazing. They are quite expensive. Uh, I'm not sure how much they are now, but I, I do know they range in the thousands of dollars. Um, yeah. I've never actually bought a sauna. I've always uh, made my own sauna. And usually with a little bit of creative imagination, you can create saunas for next to nothing. For like $150, £120, pounds, you can create a sauna. All you need to do is you need to buy the lamps, um, which are around $30, 30 pounds for the, for the full set. You want to be buying three lamps or four lamps, and you want to um, attach them to a wall or some board. Um, there's an article that's gonna that goes into this much more deeply, but I just wanted to stress that you can do this uh, on the cheap. Uh, Dr. Wilson recommends that the sauna lights be in a triangle. So one light wants to be hitting the torso and two lights at the bottom of the triangle wants to be hitting um, the bottom of the abdomen. You can do it in a diamond shape. So the top lamp, is hitting the kind of throat area or the bottom of the face, uh, the two lamps in the middle, is it in the top of the torso and one down at the abdomen. Uh, now you can use, you need to use some creative imagination. When I lived in university, I had an ensuite small shower cubicle and I ended up attaching some sauna lamps to a board and the, so the shower cubicle could heat up to a good temperature for me to have a sauna. Um, there was one time when I was living in a small box room. There was literally no space to put a sauna. I ended up drilling <laughs> bulbs into the back of the door, and I created this kind of hanging shelter that I kind of hooked onto the ceiling um, using towels, organic towels, and that created a good space for me to sit in. It is very important, in my opinion, to make sure that the space of the sauna is heated up well. Um, what you will tend to find is that if you don't heat up the sauna well um, you can burn yourself which is not good um, especially if you're too close to, to the lamps what I say to people is that if you're in a big room um, use a space heater so you can heat the room up first with a space heater and then shine the bulbs usually if you get a decent enclosure you don't need a space heater the enclosure will heat up the, the, the inside of the enclosure fairly well um already uh if you're living in cold countries like england um over the winter it gets super cold and generally you do need a space heater inside the enclosure if you're building it yourself to get the temperature up to the um to the right celsius as susan mentioned don't worry too much about sweating what you'll tend to find is as time goes on, your body will get much better at regulating temperature. It kind of knows intuitively that you're going to have a sauna, so it'll kind of prepare itself for sweating. Literally in five minutes, you'll be sweating buckets, and you'll be sweating in places that you didn't even realize you could sweat from after a few months. It's quite astounding. Uh, that's what happened to me after a while. Um, I will mention a little bit about EMF-sensitive individuals. People that who have EMF sensitivity, a lot of my clients do. Uh, that's what I had. Um, Although the near infrared bulbs are very, very low on EMFs, it can people can be sensitive to them. So what I would say is I would buy a single uh, lamp sauna in the beginning, test it out on you. If you're getting the EMF symptoms, 
then maybe it might you might have to do the program a little bit until you release some of the toxins that are causing the symptoms for you then to use the sauna. But in general, most people can use a sauna with EMF sensitivity. If you're really EMF tech savvy, you can um, line the wires with uh, conductive materials and stop the dirty electricity, which tends to be the issue in EMF sensitive individuals. Um, but I think that's it, Susan, if you want to add, any, want to add anything else. I think that's about it. One thing that I thought was a really important point that you touched on that I just wanted to reiterate was the issue of not going above 20 minutes or even starting with less to begin with. Um, one thing that I found that happened to myself and happened to some of my clients is that it feels good and so you do want to progress more quickly and you tend to let that time sneak up. And, and what can happen is that you feel you feel fine for a period of time doing 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, you know, you're getting up there. And then all of a sudden it brings on such a big dump that it kind of hits you. And so, um, you know, just to keep that in mind, that to be cautious, even if you're going, well, 20 minutes, I'm totally doing fine. Be cautious about extending that time because it's cumulative. Sometimes it's not, well, I was, I was fine today. I'm just going to stick with that increased time. Mm -hmm. So just, just an extra note of caution with that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, wonderful, wonderful to include as, as part of the program. Yeah, and, and you know, s some people, when they begin the program, they don't understand the program too well, and they don't understand healing reactions, and they don't understand program changes. It is easy to go in the sauna, and you get a healing reaction, and because you're not in tune with how the program works, or you're not in touch with your practitioner, you'll kind of think, oh, I'm having a healing reaction, I'll go in the sauna even more, and then yeah. you'll, pull out, you'll pull out the healing reaction even more. And it's hard for me to actually explain what healing reactions can do to you without you actually experiencing. So I really want to put across, it's so important just to stick to the program as it is because healing reactions can get intense, you know, more intense that you can, than you probably realize. So the last thing you want to be doing is having a unnecessarily traumatic experience with a healing reaction when there's no need to experience that. Exactly. You, can, you know, you know, we don't want to, I don't want to beat around the bush of healing reactions. They can traumatize you if you're not doing the program correctly as it's set out. If you're doing way too much of it, a really intense healing reaction can be super problematic. Um, right. and you don't want to be in that situation. Right. And I always like to tell people you need to think about it as a marathon, not a sprint. There, there's only so much that you can deal, your body can deal with at a time. So it's not as though you can go, well, I'm just going to do more of everything and get through it in a year. It doesn't work like that. So, um, yeah, just brilliant. Take it as you go. Think of it as a marathon. The okay. Whole I think a marathon. The whole program's a marathon and not yeah. a sprint. That's the exactly. Thing. Cool. So I think that's it for that section. Um, and we will move on to the next section to the um, coffee enemas.